I prepare my wig can on the doll's head, making sure that is completely fixed. Off camera, I already fixed the middle of the hair so that I can glue the other wets of the hair on the wig cap. Now with the hair attached, I begin to cut little by little from the bottom and thus avoid having problems when it's going to style it. As you can see, I fixed it with needles to be able to style it better. And now I will release the bone that I made to be able to work on the upper part in the same way as I did with the lower part. Achieving a hairstyle like Lloyd was a bit difficult as I want a more detailed touch and I know it will look 100% the same, but at least I was able to achieve something that would fit better on the doll's head. With that, I finished fixing with hairspray since I don't like my dolls to lose shape on their hairstyle. And with that, it's ready. And with that, I put the wig on the head on the doll which I also painted pink. And off camera, I already glued the hair wax to focus more on styling her hair, dividing into sections to start cutting. With some chopstick, I tried to make her curls. This time I only used water to shake her hair and thus do something different when doing Anya's hairstyle. And this is how her hairstyle looks. It looks very puffy and the color looks like cotton candy. <laughs> Now to ensure the shape, I will protect it with hairspray. The next step will be to make the cones of her head, and for that I use pins to first make the structure so that later I will make the shape with a patsy sculpt. I have no idea what those things are, but I heard around that they are little witch hats which Anya never takes off, literally. And this is how they turn it out, making both look similar was very difficult, but I think I achieved a good result. Once the accessories are made, I begin to paint them with several layers of black paint. And then made the decoration with gold paint. With a fine brush, I cover my mistake with more black. And this is the result. Each one looks so good even after varnish it. This is how they will look on the doll's head along with the hair and it was definitely what I wanted. I already made the wig and thus focus more on making her hairstyle. Your hairstyle at first glance it seems complicated to do, but after having seen this art of the manga and several cosplay tutorials I will do it as follows. First I will separate the front strands and that each one has the same amount of hair. Now I attach two strands that are close to the ears as you can see. With a wet brush I comb the back which I divided and thus begin to braid on both sides. Stay in this way, right now it looks like Wednesday, but when I cross in the braids and surrounding on the head the hair style changes completely as you can see. Now with my tools I will secure the hairstyle so that it doesn't come loose and even more so with the help of the hairspray. And with that I'm going to style the bands and give it the anime touch.
Now with scissors I will cut the front strands. Off camera I cut them more with the scalpel and they turn it out much better. I know fixing them with the spray since it was not necessary. As you can see I already put the top head on his body and applied 3 layers of MSC to be able to work. Off camera I draw the rest of the lines of the eyes in order to have the most symmetrical and proportionated shades and thus be able to focus on the fills and outlines of the toe as I draw them in my concept. Now speaking a little about Spy Family, I felt that it had been one of those animes that caught your attention when you saw the aesthetics and plot of the first time. I really like the roles that the forger have in this story since they had to hide their true identities for their own benefit. Being Loy a spy, you're an assassin and Anya a telepath. The dynamic they all have been a fake family made without a doubt a very entertaining anime to watch. Lloyd is a very attractive man and also I want to achieve that with his ripping. Achieving those outlines on his face was a bit difficult since they had to fit well on the face of the base top. And in the end I think I achieved it by passing the first line in his face. Also, I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks so, but his face is very adorable when he's blushing and it's embarrassing. Seriously, it's very funny. <laughs> Now with another layer of spray, I color his eye with a layer of light blue, and then outline certain areas on his face with a cream pencil. With a dark brown tone, I touch up more his facial lines. And now with a black pencil, I highlighted the eyelashes more very carefully. I think the only thing I hate about this pencil is they are very sensitive to touch which makes it them breaking very quickly. After another layer, I decided to brush the watercolor since the pencil wasn't helping me at this point, and so I was able to achieve a better outline in certain areas on his face. With that, I finished outlining his face using acrylic paints and thus to give a better finish with brighter colors. And to finish, I apply gloss varnish to the whites of the eyes and lids. And this is how Agent Twilight's face looks. Without a doubt, having done it in my style gives a very different aesthetic from the original design that I really like a lot. Now let's see how the doll looks with the hair on. Oh my god, he looks too handsome! Anya, I like your papa. <laughs> but seriously, I like the result. And after 3 coats of MSC, I begin to draw circle for the shape of her eyes. Now speaking a bit about the character, Anya is an undiable a character with too much charisma and very funny and more when it comes to their expressions. Last year I went to an anime event in my country and I took a photo with a girl who made a cosplay of Anya. But for the photo I asked her to make the heh <laughs> face of Anya. And yes, she did it. It was seriously a really fun moment. <laughs> After another coat of spray, I paint her pupils green using different shades to give a gradient effect. After that, I use other colors and start to highlight her lashes with dark brown. Now with a lighter shape of green, I draw the rings that surround her pupils. And I can finally use the black pencil to mark her eyelashes. Now with that, it's time to use the pencil as watercolors, and then use the acrylics.
as a personal touch I made some dots with neon in the center of the pupils. With this clear paint I will make the rings of her eyes look more pop. And with that I made the shine of her eyes with white paint. Off camera I also repaint again her head pink. And with a last coat of spray I protect the white area of her eyes with gloss varnish. And with a matte one I only protect her mouth and eyebrows. And this is how she turned it out. She looks so adorable and even more so after having modified her mouth. I'm definitely satisfied and delighted with this result. Very well, now let's see how she looks with her hair on. And after having pulled her accessories on, she is definitely Anya. And after having applied 3 layers of MSC, I begin to trace the line of her eyes with a light pencil as I draw them in my concepts. Speaking a bit about the character, I like that George, despite having a job like, you know, has some very funny and cute moments and more when she's drunk. Although she's also very dangerous when she's drunk. But she always shows a lot of appreciation to her fake family. With my baseline draw, I begin to pass the blush on her lids to give a more natural touch and then continue with the rest of her face. Also with the child pastel, I mark the color for the base of her pupils. Now with that, I continue to highlight the face with the watercolors. The advantage of having shrunk the head is that the pencils mark the surface in a more solid way. With a dark brown pencil, I give a little intensity to her eyelashes, and so on with her eyebrows. Very well, now comes the best part, which is to give more detail with the black pencil. With a pink pencil I will give it more depth to her pupils. With that, it's time to use the brushes in certain areas along with the acrylics. Just like I did with Lloyd and Anya, I will put glitter paint in the middle of her pupils and then give her eyes shine. Off camera, optionally, I painted the line where her hair will go in black. And I finished by applying gloss varnish only to the white part of her eyes and I also to her lids. And this is what your face looks like. Adding my own details and style to each ribbon helps a lot, and I think it makes more impact. I really love how her eyes turn it out. Alright, now let's see how she looks with her hair on. And as always, the hair is everything. She looks seriously amazing. Putting a fabric of the same color as Lois was very difficult, but luckily I was able to find this one, which is covered in fabric. The color became quite similar to that of his suit when I saw it, and the best thing is that it was cheap and with a discount. So now that my parts are cut, the only thing I will do is to sew everything by hand. And this is how both pieces turn it out. To make the coat, I use the clothing pattern of the BTS dolls, only adjusting a little more to the body. Up camera, I also made his white shirt and his vest, using this tiny fabric with a darker shape of green, as well as his pair of suits. With all the clothes already so I only had to glue the bottom to each piece. Some are recycled from the BTS dolls, and others I sculpted with a pot set coat so that they resemble the others. With a potsy, I also call his label pink, which is the logo of WISE, the secret organization that Twilight works with. This piece is very small, and painting it was a big challenge. So I just had to glue it on the coat and it's done.
Definitely the bottoms gives each piece an amazing finish. Making this clothes took me a week to finish and I think it was worth the effort just looking at it. Off camera I position his hands in different ways so that they have more dynamism when making poses. If you want to know how I did it, check this tutorial I made. If any of you have BTS dolls, this tutorial will help you to customize their hands. Going back to the video, now I'm going to paint his hands black to simulate the gloss he wears. Now I'm going to shine them so they have a better finish, leaving them completely shiny. Every time I customize one of these dolls, I always tend to reuse their shoes, and in this case, I will also do the same with this doll. Only this time, I modify them a bit so that they resemble Lloyd's shoes a bit using craft foam for the sole of this. And just as I did with the gloves, I will paint over them and then protect them with a layer of varnish, this time using a matte one. Leaving bow in this way. If you remember this head you see here, it was the one I was originally going to use for Yuji's repaint, which unfortunately got damaged because of the reroute, so in order to not waste it, I decided to turn it into a mask. Twilight is known to be a master of disguise every time he has a new mission, which is something that represents him a lot and I decided to do the same with it though. And yeah, this is something completely normal in this hobby. <laughs> With the scalpel, I begin to open his eyes and make this shape. Off camera, I completely modified them with a potsy. And this is how it would look with paint on. For the design, I based completely on the disguise of his first mission at the beginning of the anime. I not only made him the mask, I also included several accessories, which would be his gun, the watch that he wears on his wrist, and the way hat that he sometimes wears to go out, which I did the same way I did Noir's. Oh, also off camera I made his tie. And with that, Lloyd Forger is done. With my partner's market on the fabric, this is how the white shirt and pants turn it out. I literally used this image to make her uniform and it was seriously helpful, honestly. Now it's time to work on the main piece of her uniform. With this golden ribbon I will use it to make the bottom piece. I already fit it with a glue stick, so that later I can cut the edges. And then sew it with golden thread. Stay in this way, I repeat the same process in the other pieces so that I will join them off camera. And after having joined it, this is how it turned it out. I must say that this piece has been my second try. This has been the first one, and I must say that after I put paint and glue on it, it made it hard before joining. Oh. Well, the point is that I can use this. So, to be able to do the decoration, with the power of editing, I go from this to this. And yes, everything has been painted by him. Sometimes taking your time and doing this with patience pays off. Off camera, I painted the Eden logo on the shirt and with gold paint decorated the pants with the same pattern of the uniform. And this is how it will look on the doll's body. This video was not recorded in order, so don't worry about the doll's head. I'll use a thin red ribbon to make the decoration on her neck, which I'll glue it with silicone glue. Off camera, I made the emblem that surrounds the ribbon with a bit of a potsy. And as you can see, it's very small. Just look my finger. I just have to glue it very carefully with super glue and it's ready. Also, off camera, I already saw her white stockings. For these shoes, I decided to reuse the ones that came with the doll and made them look like the ones Anya wears in her uniform. I'll just cut the part that I don't need with a scalpel looking like this. And with some ribbon and a potsy, I completely changed them. I painted them off camera, giving me this result, and they look great. And this is how Anya's uniform has turned it out, without a doubt the small details giving it an excellent touch. Just like I did with Lloyd, I want Anya to have two looks. So off camera I also made her casual clothes which consists on a black dress and short socks. For the dress I used the same pattern as the uniform, I only changed the neckline and the shape of the slits. So tell me in the comments, which one is your favorite look? 
I couldn't leave Anya empty handed, and to complement her I decided to make her plush toy Mr. Chimera using this figure of a Pokemon, um, I think it's a Pokemon, I just don't know which one. And then completely modified it with a potsy to make it look more like Mr. Chimera, so I just had to paint it and that's it. And with that, Anya Forger is ready. For your dress, I will use two different types of fabric. The black one is elastic, while the red one is not. Of camera, I made the base. Making the part was very difficult. And it also took longer because I didn't use the correct fabric. But in the end, I think it turned it out well. With a pencil, I draw the rose patterns on the back of her dress. I don't know if you can see them, but there they are. Now with paint mixed with Mod Podge, I made the decoration, and doing it feel very satisfying. And this has been the result. This is how the dress will look on the body of the doll, making the figure stand out just as I wanted. For the decoration, I will use thin black ribbons, which will give it a better finish. I could not record the process of this part since it was very uncomfortable for me. I will only say that I glued the ribbons to the body with silicone glue and more in the neck part. And yes, the dress can no longer be removed, and I must say that it looks elegant with that on. Now with a small piece of black cloth, I will make the cloth that she has on her hands. And this is how, how I put them on the dough. Leaving it this way. And with that, I continue with her boots. It's been a while since I made those shoes from scratch, and I just hope not having loose practice. So now with the needle I start to sew. For the fabric I use the same one that I use for the dress. And yes, it's going to stretch. For as always, I will use soft cardboard for the soles, which I will gradually put on the feet. I use masking tape to hold it for a few minutes. And with that I will be able to make the shape of the boots. Leaving it like this. Off camera, I made the heel with tuck pits and I reforcing them with a potsy skull, giving it a better shape and finish. Now I paint the heel several times with black paint and I will paint their sole with red paint. And look at this result, they really look amazing, such a wonder. It seems that I had no loose practice. Off camera, I made the decoration using the same ribbon that I used for the dress. Now that the boots are ready, I'll take them off the mannequin so I can put them on the doll. Leaving it like this. Off camera, I also made her accessories, which will be her emblem in the shape of a rose and her pair of earrings which I made with tuck pits and a potsy. Leaving it like this. With that done, I glued the wig to her head. For her headband, I took one that I found from Cleo the Nile, which I cut and molded with my hands to give it this shape. So now with some silicone glue and gold ribbon which is left over from Anya's uniform, I will go cover the texture for the headband and don't have a solid surface. Reminded as you can see. With these fake roses I will use two to make the decoration that it has on both sides. Staying like this. As you can see I made the decoration of thorns using more tooth bits. With that ready, I begin to paint everything with gold.
and with that the headband is ready. Look at this result. This is how it will look on George's head and it looks good on her. Off camera I made her nice using barbecue sticks with other things and which I painted in gold too. God I miss making weapons, ok no, I'm joking. <laughs> Ok, just like I did with Lloyd and Anya, I want George to have a second look. At first I was going to make her pink gabardine, but due to lack of time I couldn't do it, so sorry guys. And rewatching the anime, I released this look in the first episodes, so I decided to do the following. A white pashmina, a pair of low heels with the same decoration as her boots, a pearl bracelet, a purse, and of course her other headband that she wears regularly. With all this already I will have a second complete look. Stay in this way, and wow, it changed a lot just removing the gloves, boots and the gold headband, it looks very elegant in the same way. And as always, tell me in the comments which is your favorite look. And with that, your forger is ready.